Okay, we're now going into some watercolor painting and we're gonna do some landscape painting. So the watercolor landscape painting. This first video is just gonna get us started and then we'll do a second video that actually talks about the project and how to do it. We've done this choosing of images before, but just as a reminder, Mr. Judge will give you a sticky note as you walk in. Kind of walk past here and really look at the different images, the different landscapes that you have to choose from. You know, they're, they're from all over. Some of them are like country scenes, like here we have a farmhouse. Um, here we have like the road. Here is more of a uh, windmill. We have parks, sunflowers, we have castles. You know, so really kind of look. Some of them have water, some of them don't. But really kind of look and think about what is the image you want to do. Remember, easy doesn't necessarily mean good because if your heart isn't into it, it's going to show. So pick the image that you like. Pick the one that you're going to put your heart into so that when you're doing it, it looks like your heart is in it. So really pick the one that you're going to like the most. Put your name, first and last name, your period number, period two, period three, period four, whatever, and then put the number of the image that you want. Only those are going to be printed. We're not doing extra ones. So really decide which one that is that you want to do. Put the number on it and you're going to give it to Mr. Judge. Remember it takes at least a day before the images can get to us. So keep that in mind. So that's how you're going to start this out is by picking. Then you're going to experiment a little bit with watercolor paints. We used these when we did the background for our self-portraits, um, but now we're adding to the mix watercolor colored pencils, which are not the same as regular colored pencils. Watercolor colored pencils, when you look at them where the name is, you will see a paintbrush, like a little emblem of a paintbrush on the side, okay? Only pencils with the paintbrush on the side can you use like this, and I'm going to show you how to use them. If they do not have the paintbrush, they are a regular colored pencil, and it will not work the way that this works. So the first thing I kind of want you guys to do is kind of play around with the material and get comfortable with it. So you're going to need water and a water cup, paintbrush, watercolor paints, and the watercolor colored pencils. You're going to have to share, so just be aware of that. Everyone has to share. There isn't enough for everyone to have their own. Some different techniques of, let's start with watercolor paints. You can do, so the wet on wet technique is where you wet the paper with the water and then you also wet the paint and then you paint over where you just wet the paper. So the paper is wet and the watercolor is wet and that gives you kind of what is called a wash, okay? It, it's very translucent, a lot of white will show through. We then have wet on dry, which the water or the paint is wet, but the paper is dry. And you can kind of see that gives you a much darker value. Now, remember the more water you use, the lighter the value becomes. Okay, so let's say you need a dark area versus a light area. You would use less water for the darker areas, and then you would go in and add more water where you need the lighter areas to be. So, like this painting, that was done, same exact materials. You can see where the reds, you know, are really bold and then where they start to kind of let some of the yellow show through. More water, less water, okay? So different techniques with watercolor paints, you've used them before, you kind of know how to do this. My guess is most of you have not used watercolor colored pencils before. Um, they're kind of fun. Two different ways to use them. You can take the actual pencil and dip it in the water Remember, it has to have the paintbrush on the side, otherwise it doesn't work. 
So you take it, you dip it in the water, and you draw. Now what that effect does is it kind of spreads it out, but it allows you to keep kind of the line of the pencil as well. Okay, so like let's say you're doing details and you really want to show, like in this one, the branches that are kind of coming through. It'd be easier to dip the pencil in the water and draw it in so it still kind of spreads, but yet you still see the pencil line. Okay, um, that's gonna give you more of the details. It's not gonna blend as easily as these blend. The other way to do it is let's say you're, you're drawing. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I'm just kinda doing a little design here. I'm gonna add some black in here. You know what, let's take a little bit of yellow. Get some complementary colors going. The violet with the yellow. Add some of that at the end. Then what you do is you take the paintbrush and now you start painting. And you'll see that now it starts to blend. Now, you have to be careful if you want details to still show you gotta be careful because look at how the black is kind of coming up all the way you just want to decide where are you going to wet what you drew with the water with the paintbrush you can still see details lines in there which is where this kind of comes into play so you're doing all of these landscapes that you have to choose from have details in them. Here's another one that a student did. The perspective is a little off. You know, the, the, it actually kind of needed to go more like this. It kind of looks like it's going up rather than back. However, the details that they did in the trees and in the ground, really good. You know, they did some of the splatter that we did with our self-portraits. Remember, um, for splatter, you kind of run your thumb across and it kind of gives you that that little splattered look kind of thing. Um, this one, if you notice there's really, um, there's no white paint in these. There is white in the watercolor color pencils, but you can't really paint whole areas with that. So in this image, there is white left they actually let the paper show through. So if you have a really bright white area, so let's look. Um, if you look up here, this is number 24, okay? This is the one that they did. In this area, it's bright white. Since we don't have white paint, they actually left that area with no paint in it. They did leave some of that paper show through, so it's pure white. But to get this where it covers the painting in the background, they used some of the watercolor color pencil and actually drew right over the top of it. So if you get up close to it, and these will be hung up so you can see, and if you wanna get up close, you can. You can actually see some of the white of the pencil. Okay, so you're gonna to have to really think about what colors are you using? How are you using them? Where do you need the detail? Where do you need it to be a wash? That's why you get both of these materials. You get both the watercolor paints to do big areas and backgrounds and watercolor color pencils to do details to get those small areas. This one I did and I wanted to show you because again, you know how I talked to you guys about your signature? Nobody ever taught me about that. This, nowadays I would have like written it over here. I would have just put MS instead of this, so that's kind of like a sore thumb. So let's ignore that. I did this in 1992, okay? I was in junior high when I actually did this painting. But, so we have details in it, and then wide areas of color, and areas of like the blue watercolor paints in the background, and then the tan for the sand, and the browns for the trees, 
and yet for the leaves we have details so that we can still see them. So play around a little bit with the materials. Try it out. See what the different colors look like. When you draw it on, take some of that and see. Well, that really kind of blends in. It gives a nice soft peach color. How about the orange? What does the orange look like? And what about if I did a line? You know, well, that area kind of all blends in. My lines still show. You know, play around with it. See what it looks like. See how you did a painting part of it here. Let's use orange. And now you go back and you draw on top of it. Now keep in mind, the more wet you get the paper, it's going to kind of beat up on you. Some of the paper might kind of um, get like pilly, meaning like you can feel it. It just happens because water and paper don't necessarily like each other, but that's okay. And then you can go back in and see how does that look if you use the watercolor pencils on top of the areas that you just watercolor painted. You know, play around, see what you want. Think about the image that you've chosen and what do you need to be able to do? Like. If you did this one, number 12, you know, you have these kind of brown gray stairs with all of these red leaves on them. Okay, so we take the black, but we need to do a lot of water so that we kind of start to get that gray, you know, and then we have to do all of our leaves, which are our reds. you know, and our oranges in there. So play around and see how, how does it work? Would it be better to do like the little colors of the leaves? You know, kind of take a little bit of water and fill that in. And then maybe take a little bit of the black, a lot of water, a little bit of black, and then see if you could, how would it look if you then did the stairs? You know, so kind of play with it. What works best? Which one goes on top best? Which one goes on bottom best? Do you use both of them? Play around, start to decide how you're gonna use each material and how's it gonna look and how's it gonna work. Play with it, figure it out before you final you do your final drawing because the final drawing, you know, you, it's kind of like everything else. You can't really erase watercolor paints and you don't want to have to keep starting over. So play with it first to figure out how it works, what works well together, colors. You can see, even though you don't have the image yet in front of you, like right in front of you, you can kind of look and be like, there's a lot of oranges and browns and play around with the colors so that by the time you get your image and you go to start, you know exactly what to do. Okay, so that's kind of the demo on this. And then this next video, we will actually talk about what you have to do and go through the procedures and I'll show you some past students examples. All right, so have fun, start to figure it out, and then we'll get into the actual project. All right.